The Azure window in Malta collapsed in 2017. Also in 2017, Congress passed a change to U.S. tax law that makes U.S. corporations exempt from U.S. tax on dividends from their foreign 10% or more subsidiaries. This applies for dividends received after 2017. Prior to 2018, though, U.S. corporations receiving foreign dividends paid U.S. tax on those dividends and got a credit for foreign income taxes the subsidiary had paid. This deemed paid credit still applies for 2017 returns. This video covers the deemed paid credit allowed to U.S. corporations before 2018. Here's what we'll cover. The purpose of this deemed paid credit, as it's called, is to put a U.S. corporation owning non-consolidated subsidiaries on the same footing as if the subsidiary were a consolidated subsidiary, at least for the foreign tax credit. U.S. corporations get to either file a consolidated return with their U.S. subsidiaries or claim a dividends received deduction when they get a dividend from such a subsidiary. This reduces U.S. tax, except with relation to foreign income taxes. Thus, there's a deemed paid credit. Here's how it works in a nutshell. When the foreign sub pays a dividend, a portion of its taxes flow through to the U.S. corporation that's a shareholder, along with the dividend that shareholder grosses up the dividend for the tax that comes with it. Then it claims a credit for such foreign income taxes. The credit happens only when the U.S. corporation recognizes the dividend income, either as a dividend or as subpart F, that we'll talk about much later. Individuals and S corporations don't get this deemed paid credit. It's only for regular C corporations. The same rules apply for the deemed paid credit as well as the regular credit in terms of what taxes can be claimed. We discussed those rules earlier. These deemed paid taxes as well as other foreign ta income taxes actually paid are subject to the limitations on the credit that we'll discuss in the next segment. There's a six-tier limit on claiming this deemed paid credit. The taxes must have been paid by a first-tier foreign subsidiary paying the dividend to the U.S. corporation or have flowed up the chain from lower-tier subs. Taxes paid below the sixth tier are not eligible for the credit. There's also an ownership requirement. To get the credit, the U.S. corporation must directly own 10% of the top foreign subsidiary. If the foreign taxes were paid by a lower tier corporation, the corporation owning the subsidiary must directly own at least 10% of that sub. In addition, the U.S. corporation getting the credit must indirectly own at least 5% of the lower tier subsidiary. In addition, no credits are allowed for taxes paid by a foreign corporation below the third tier unless that foreign corporation is a controlled foreign corporation. We'll discuss that concept when we talk about subpart F. The determination of whether these ownership tests are met is made separately for each dividend up the chain at the time the dividend is made. We'll discuss an example in one of the webinars and in our conference calls. Here's the first quiz for this segment. As 
lower tier subs pay dividends, the earnings and profits, or E&P, as well as the foreign taxes, are considered to flow up the chain. This flowing up results in the E&P and taxes of the lower tier company being pooled together with that of the upper tier company. Once it's pooled together, an item loses its identity as to where it came from. Each subsidiary must track E&P and taxes separately for each basket. Currently there are two baskets, general and passive. We briefly discussed those in the last segment and we'll discuss them extensively in the limitation segment. In addition, the rules changed dramatically in 1986 and post-86 earnings and taxes must be tracked separately from pre-87 ones. There's one pool for each basket for all of post-86. There is a separate year-by-year -year pool for each pre-87 year. This has implications we'll discuss in a bit. Tax deemed paid is associated with each dividend during the year the dividend is paid based on the pools. This is done separately for each dividend coming up the chain of subsidiaries as well as separately for the dividend from the top subsidiary to the U.S corporate shareholder. You need to understand the basics of how dividends and E&P work. We're not covering that in this course. You should have covered that in the prerequisite corporate tax course. However, just to review, distributions are considered dividends only to the extent of E&P under Section 316. For the deemed paid credit, the regular E&P concepts apply, including Section 312. Here's the formula for determining how much tax is associated with the dividend. Basically, it's just the portion of the E&P that was distributed as a dividend. Once the dividend happens, the E&P and tax are removed from the pool of the distributing corporation. If the dividend recipient is an upper tier foreign corporation, then the E&P and tax are put in that recipient's E&P and tax pools. If the recipient is a U.S. corporation, then the dividend is taxable and the deemed paid tax is available as a credit. In addition to the dividend being taxable, the income of the U.S. corporation is grossed up for the amount of the tax. That is, the corporation includes that amount as additional income, characterized just like the dividend. This, in effect, puts the U.S. corporation's income on a pre-tax basis. The corporation then gets a credit for the foreign tax subject to limitations with the other foreign income taxes. This applies for dividends as well as subpart F inclusions. It works a little different in a year the U.S. corporation is claiming foreign taxes as deductions. There's no gross up or credit. Only the dividend is taxable. Keep in mind that we're not talking about withholding taxes here. Those are separate. They're the tax of the shareholder even though they're withheld. Withholding tax on dividends is not a deemed paid tax. It's a tax actually paid by the shareholder. There are two inherent traps in the interaction of separate pooling concept with the E&P rules. The rules under Section 316 say that a distribution is a dividend to the extent of current or accumulated e and P and is from the most recently accumulated e and P first. If there's no total, that is, accumulated e and P in the pool is zero, the taxes get trapped. The first trap is taxes may be in a basket 
where the earnings have been depleted from the pool. The second trap is there may be a deficit in E&P that triggers recharacterization. We'll talk more about that later, but before we proceed, here's a quiz. Let's talk about adjustments to tax pools. When there's a change in the amount of tax for a sub that paid a dividend, the tax pool must be adjusted. It doesn't matter what caused the change. It could be the foreign tax amount changed from when, from when accrued. It could be an assessment or a refund. It could even be just a change in exchange rates since tax pools are tracked in dollars. Whatever the cause, the pools of tax, and maybe E&P, must be changed. If the change for taxes of a foreign subsidiary merely reduces what's left in the tax and E&P pools, then nothing is required except a notice to the IRS and adjusting the pools. If, however, that change pushes a tax or E&P pool below zero, then more adjustments may be needed. If the sub in question paid a dividend during the accrual year or later, and one of the pools was adjusted below zero as of the dividend, then the dividend needs to be changed. So does the amount of tax flowing with it. Where the dividend is foreign to foreign, this might merely cause an upper tier pool to be adjusted with no other effects. However, where the ultimate effect after such adjustments is to change the amount of a dividend or tax flowing to a U.S. corporate shareholder, then an amended return is required. Even a foreign to foreign dividend adjustment may cause an amended return requirement if the foreign to foreign dividend was subpart F or wiped out a pool. We'll talk more about subpart F in that module. We'll cover some examples in the live calls. This brings us to the problems caused by deficits in E&P of the foreign subsidiary. Under Section 316, a distribution can be a dividend when a sub has negative accumulated E&P if it has current E&P. In such case, no tax flows with the dividend. The denominator of that fraction is the accumulated E&P, not the current E&P. When there's a distribution at a time when there's a deficit in accumulated E&P, that deficit is carried forward or back, potentially across the 1986-1987 line. This can cause deficits or zero balances in some pools. A pre-87 pool for a, a particular year can be wiped out with such a carryback of a deficit. When the E&P of a pre-87 year pool is wiped out, the taxes associated with that year are forever unavailable to flow up as credits. As we get further from 1986, the annual pooling trap becomes less relevant. There's still a potential trap for post-86 earnings and taxes, though, associated with different baskets. This was particularly acute in years between 1987 and 2006, when we had more than two baskets. I mentioned at the first of this segment that taxes flow up the chain with earnings. There's no gross up for a dividend from a lower tier foreign sub to an upper tier one. They wouldn't have any effect. They're netted together. Instead, the taxes associated with the dividend up the chain are simply added to the pool of taxes of the sub getting the dividend. Another interesting thing happens 
if the ENP underlying the dividend was pre-1987, the dividends and taxes lose their character as pre-1987. They become post-1986 E&P and tax. They still have to be basketized, but the definitions of pre-86 baskets and post-87 baskets are different. In order for there to be a tearing up of taxes or a deemed paid credit, the ownership we, tests we talked about must be met. Here's an example where there was no deemed paid credit to the U.S. shareholders. Even though the consolidated return group as a whole met the ownership tests, the court in First Chicago held that since the individual subs didn't meet the test, there was no deemed paid credit. That's been adopted in the regs now. Here's a quiz. That's it for this module's videos. We'll cover an example in the webinar. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for learning with me.